And I so clearly remember my mother saying to my father, oh, this is the ship they say is unsinkable. My father said, no, this is the ship that is unsinkable. My mother said, well, that is flying in the face of God, and that ship will never get there. And right up to us boarding the ship on the day of sailing, my mother baked my father not to go. Mrs. Manning, where were you when the ship struck the iceberg? Um, in the steerage, in the steerage class. You were emigrating to America? Yes, I was coming over here to my sister. If I may ask, how old were you then? I was 16, going on 17, be 17 in October. How did you escape? Well, we were standing on the steerage, third class they call it, and um, then we couldn't get up second. And of course, then there was one man with us, and he was our guardian angel, and he said, for God's sake, let the women up. So at that, I got up and then you second. Got, mm -hmm. And then you got into a lifeboat? And no, then I had to go to first cabin. The lifeboats were only going from first cabin. So there was a man on the second deck and he asked me to go on his shoulder and I climbed over and then I got, I think it was the last boat that was going out. Did you see the ship sink? Oh yes. I was looking at it sinking when we were in the lifeboat because we were in the lifeboats for nine hours. And then which ship rescued you? Carpathia. Carpathia picked us up then early in the morning, about nine o'clock or something. I think it was about nine o'clock in the morning. Slocum, I believe you were in charge of the Turkish bath on the Titanic. I was. And where were you when the iceberg hit the ship? I was in bed. How did you escape? In the last lifeboat. And I didn't want to go. And then, of course, you realized that things were very serious. Yes, I did. And did you see the ship sink? I did. It sank very quickly. That must have been a most dramatic sight. It was, because you could just see the lights going down and down. Did you hear the music playing? I did. Almost till the end? Till the end, I heard them play. But before I got my life belt on, I met a, a young couple, and uh, I can tell you her name. It was a Mrs. Clark. They'd spent their honeymoon in France, and we'd picked them up at Cherbourg. And uh, she she was having trouble with her life belt, so I fixed that on to her, and I said, "I think you'd better get into a lifeboat." And there was one in the port on the port side. So she said, no, she said, I don't want to go there. I don't want to leave my husband. So I said, well, it's just precautionary measure. You get in, your husband will follow later on. And I got her away, and that was that. And then I picked up my own life belt and put it on.
and the rest were women and children. And I, I sat on a seat and uh, who should be, I sat next to Mrs. Clark, the, the, the girl I'd put into a lifeboat. And she said, uh, the first thing she said, where's my, have I seen my, have you seen my husband? So I said, no, I haven't, but I expect he'll be all right. Anyway, I was pretty, in a pretty bad way then, as you can imagine, frozen solid almost. And she wrapped me round with a cloak. She had some sort of blanket or a coat on. Anyway, I think uh, she probably saved my life, I don't know. But uh, I saved hers. At least I think I might have done. I think I did. And she saved mine. I'm convinced that as long as this world lasts, there will be this avid interest in the Titanic because it is the one major disaster that's ever taken place in this world for which there was no excuse for one life being lost. The Titanic took two and a half hours to sink. The sea was calm. If there had been enough lifeboats, no one would have died. And I'm sure that the world reads about this, realizes it, and will always look upon it as the most dreadful disaster and dreadful waste of life that ever took place.